Hey everybody, how's it going? The Johnny Cage here, and we are playing more Pokemon Leaf Green. When we left off, we took down Erica, got our fourth badge in Celadon City. This time we're going to the game corner, and we're going to take down the evil Team Rocket and stop them from doing all the evil things that Team Rocket apparently does, but we never get to see. As you may notice, we have a Derp on our team, better known as a Dodo. This is compliments of It's Not a Beaver, wanted to see me play with a dodo, wanted me to name it Derp, and Derp it is. That would have been my reaction, but I gotta say, I'm already really surprised. <laughs> For one reason and one reason alone, try attack 100% accuracy, 80 power on that sucker. I think he got it at level 21, if I remember correctly, and man, just annihilating people with that. I mean, his other moves aren't too bad. He's just a pretty good straight-up fighter. Check behind this poster, figure out that there's been a staircase. Did none of the employees ever see that the whole time? There's a giant labyrinth down here. Did you guys not see that? Seriously. But anyhow, we're going to be using Dodo a lot. Unfortunately, that meant that someone had to be taken out of the team, and it was a tough call between our Dragonzord Gyarados and Nosy Bonk the Hypno. I made a judgment call and went with Hypno the Nosy Bonk because, well, I like him a lot, and I've got to say I have been really surprised with him. But you know, you can't go wrong with a Gyarados, and he's he's good he's good insurance that you're gonna win when you got a Gyarados with you. So, unfortunately. It had uh, a decision had to be made. Someone had to leave. Like I said, you know, the the times of me having like a, having a good team that I've had for so long, they they they've come and gone. I've had hit no sense of Vermilion City, and uh, unfortunately, I have to say goodbye. But that's how Pokemon training goes. Anyhow, back to what we're doing here, taking on more uh, more Team Rocket trainers. This place is pretty easy. I'm much easier than Slifco is. I'm really not looking forward to doing that. But this place is uh, rather straightforward. All you really got to do is find the one Team Rocket guy that's got the lift key so that you can use the elevator. And then you can go fight Giovanni, who has got quite a slew of uh, hard-to-beat Pokemon, um, including a Kangaskhan. Which is probably easily the toughest of, probably easily, well, definitely easily the toughest of the three. But uh, we'll worry about that when we get there. Seeing how great Derp's doing. I'm just going to use him until I think he runs out of moves, because he's just kicking some serious ass out here. It's Machop. Try attack. Boom. Right in the face. Dead. That's what I'm talking about. It helps to have a seven level advantage, of course, but, you know, man, let's see that level. No, pretty basic levels. He doesn't get anything too great, but, you know, you've got a move that just like an instant kill move. It's kind of like having Psychic for a Psychic Pokemon. Instant kill. You can't go wrong with that. But anyhow. So, I've been enjoying the month of October so far. It's October 10th today when I record this. Um, you know, trying to embrace the Halloween spirit as it comes and goes. Um, hasn't been too Halloween-y yet, I gotta say. The leaves are starting to fall off the trees and such, but haven't seen a lot of good horror movies on or anything of the sort. I actually just picked up uh, Resident Evil 4 for the GameCube the other day, because people have been telling me, you know, I, don't, I only have like five games for the GameCube, and people are like, you should really get this, it's an awesome game. And so I've been playing that, I'm only about an hour into it, so, you know, uh, really have a lot to see, and I make really dislike survival horror games, so I was really uh, timid to, to get this in the first place, but uh, so far, so good. It's got some awesome controls, I do enjoy the over-the-shoulder um, shooting, which was a big, uh, big uh, up compared to uh, what they used to have, big up, big plus compared to what they used to have in Resident Evil, man, those old Resident Evil games are so hard to play, the weird camera angles whenever you would turn a corner and such, really strange and difficult in my opinion, and I also hate jump scares, and when you when you put together jump scares and having to be conservative of your ammo and healing items, then man, you really have a game that I'm not particularly going to enjoy, so that's, that's my biggest problem probably with survival horror games, but um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, if you guys have any games for Halloween you want to see me play, let me know that, you know, that's that Auber's out there on the table. Um, hopefully they'll do something. I want to do something on Zombies 8 and My Neighbors, do an actual review, not a playthrough, because that game would take forever. That game would probably take as long as an, an RPG would take, honestly. It's like 48 levels, but I've talked about that enough before. Um, so other than that, I've just been, uh... I've been thinking about maybe doing a, a video game pickup video because I've been, you know, I still buy NES and Super NES games, 
um, whenever I have a chance. Maybe like every other month I'll pick up a few of them. They're kind of expensive though. NES games are relatively cheap, which is why I have such a larger collection of those than I do Super Nintendo games. Um, but if you want me to do a pickup video, let me know, because I'm actually really interested in doing that. I love watching guys like the Retro Hunters, and uh, people that just like, go out, and uh, the Game Chasers. People that go out and go to flea markets and other places and, and pick up games. Of course, I'm not really uh, going to go out to flea markets, necessarily. I would. Um, I will. Maybe eventually I'll do a video on one. There is one, a really big one by my house that I wouldn't mind going to. Um, and maybe that's something we can look forward to down the road. But uh, if you want me to do some videos on games I picked up, maybe do a little bit of a bit of history on the games that I get, and you know my my opinion on them, I would love to do that for you guys because I love uh, bringing retro gamers back, especially to the younger generation of gamers. That's pretty much what I intended my channel to be like in the beginning. I love these ridiculous tiles that Team Rocket has developed the best way of moving a person from one tile to another via spinning, spinning always towards freedom. Oh, good lord, that's ridiculous. So you come up here. It's actually not much up here. I should focus more on Pokemon. I'm talking about Pokemon, but you know, I got Dodo. That was my big accomplishment. Um, I really wanted to get a uh, get Dratini or Porygon, but just couldn't do it. They're just too expensive. As you can see here, I'm getting my uh, last little bit of bit of enjoyment I can out of my Dragon Zord because he's probably going to be the next one to go on the team, unfortunately. And uh, after we're done here in Celadon, we're going to go back to Lavender City and go into the Pokemon Tower, and we're definitely getting a Ghastly and a Cubone, so unfortunately this might be our last, uh, well, one of two times, because I'm going to cut this video up, this game room, game corner video up into two parts, so, um, you know, we might see a little bit more of our Dragon Sword power, I love him, Gyarados is really cool, he's an awesome Pokemon. Um, I gotta say though, that, you know, sometimes being a Dragon type is a real disadvantage. Um, especially when you're trying to use water moves with them, because there aren't a lot of really great dragon moves. There's like Twister, and there's Dragon Rage, which just does straight up 40 damage anyways. And I think that if you're just a straight up dragon Pokemon, like a Dratini or Dragon Ares, it's kind of a disadvantage, because you can't use its special attack to increase the power of a move like Surf, for instance, because Surf is one of the best moves in the game. It is an HM, you can give it to anyone, um, just about, that can have it. But it is seriously one of the best moves in the game. I think it does 90. I think it's 95 power and 100% accuracy, and that's amazing. You know, so if you can give it to any Pokemon, give it to them. But um, if they're not strictly a water type, you're not going to get as much uh, as much fun out of it, as much killing power out of it, if you will. Uh, so here comes a Grimer. There's another Pokemon that I really want on my team. Is the Grimer. Um, I've never really raised one before, and I think of any out of any of the poison Pokemon, because I really don't like the poison Pokemon that much, but out of any of them, I think that he's probably got uh, the best chance of becoming a really good, worthwhile one to have on my team, just because he's got uh, decent stats more than anything. Not that there are any really good poison attacks. I guess Sludge is a pretty good one. Maybe Toxic, but honestly, I don't know the power or the accuracy of those moves anyway. But anyhow, we're moving further and further through the game. I'm actually thinking that this might end up being only like 50 parts or so. Um, at first I thought it was going to be like 60 to 70, but um, things are really picking up now. And I like Cel I really like when you get to Celadon, because this is where they kind of throw the linearity of the game. Leer? Why the hell did you learn Leer right now? At level 30? Oh my gosh. <sighs> Someone's got to give those programmers for the move list a punch to the face. It's ridiculous. Anyhow. Uh, let's go with... Yes, let's go with Machoke. Why not? Because Dragon's Lord's poison, and I hate poison so much. Uh, speaking of poison, going back to the Grimer uh, Muck situation, I'm definitely looking to have one of those. It's one of my requested Pokemon to have on my team anyway, so you would definitely see one of them. Uh, but I really like it when you get solid on, because there's so much that you can just choose to do. Like, we can go down the bike route, we can go back to Lavender, we can take care of us as we can go south into Fuisha City, um, do the Safari Zone, or we could just really power ourselves up super level, go to the Fighting Dojo in Saffron City and take on Slifco and go beat Sabrina and get that badge. And traditionally, I'd always gotten that badge first anyway, before I went to fight Koga in Fuchsia City. Um, but actually, it makes more sense to go fight Koga first, because you get to do fight a lot of trainers along the way, so you get a lot more extra experience, and you also get to... Um, fight an easier trainer, because Sabrina's got some pretty tough Pokemon, pretty high levels, and you have to go to Slifco before you can even fight her, so that's kind of a, a disadvantage. 
um, to go and write to Saffron first, but, you know, I'm a glutton for punishment, but I also enjoy level grinding, so who knows exactly what I'm going to do until I do it, but anyhow, we're, uh, making our way back here, trying to find the guy that's got the, uh, the lift key. I know he's in here somewhere, and I'll find him. At least there's none of those teleporting panels, because gosh, I hate those so much. I'm going to have to look through a walkthrough before I go into Slipco just to figure out the correct way to get through that place, because it's really annoying. And I know I've got to fight Ken A in there, too, but whatever. We'll worry about that when we get there. It's probably still a ways off, because I'm probably going to go to Future City first. It's just a matter of what route I'm going to take to get there. So here we go, Machop versus Machoke. And good old Machoke takes them out in one hit. Well, I'm running out of time, guys. T stay tuned for the next part. We're going through the rest of the game corner. This has been the Johnny Cage. Subscribe, like, comment if you have not. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow, later on.